is uh, Blanca Molins, and I will explain you a little bit about our work that we published, Aging, which was entitled Activation of C-reactive protein pro-inflammatory phenotype in the blood retinal barrier in vitro and the implications for age-related macular degeneration. So I work in a hospital, which a primary hospital in Barcelona, in Spain, which um, basically it's a research academic hospital in which the main, we do a lot of research, but it's basically focused on the patient and uh, what the ophthalmologist questions they have. They come to the lab and we try to solve these questions that they uh, need to address in order to better treat their patients. And in this regard, the ophthalmology department has been uh, for a long time working with many retinal disorders. And we started to look at what was happening with this protein, the C-reactive protein, which is an acute phase reactant. And uh, several years ago, it was already identified as a risk marker for AMD, age-related macular degeneration. And patients with increased levels of this protein, they were at higher risk in theory to develop AMD. And based on our previous work in another completely different area when we were when I was working in the cardiovascular field that I was working already with C-reactive protein, we saw that the, it was not only a marker but also a pro-inflammatory has a pro-inflammatory phenotype depending on the conformation of the protein. So we brought all this knowledge that we had from the cardiovascular system and tried to to study what was happening with these proteins at the retinal pigment epithelium. And a few years ago, we already saw that the, one of the conformations of the C, of CRP, the monomeric form, was uh, pro-inflammatory, and it was uh, inducing barrier disruption. And But we did all this in a very simple in vitro system, and uh, because we didn't have much money to do go for it in vivo, <laughs> we had to find out a more sophisticated way to study the role of this protein, but without uh, doing in vivo studies because that uh, we had very limited funding. So we developed a blood retinal barrier model that was mimicking a bit more the real OBRB with uh, co-culturing uh, retinal pigment epithelial cells to try to understand how this uh, CRP was uh, affecting the function of the blood retinal barrier. And it was difficult because we wanted to really see how this CRP could, could reach the subretinal space because there is no transcription of CRP in the in the RPE. And uh, so all our previous findings that okay we had seen that monomeric CRP were, could be pro-inflammatory in the in the retinal pigment epithelium if we if there was not physiological uh, relevance in the sense that this protein could not reach the the RPE. All our previous work had no sense. So we, in this work, we basically try to understand how this protein could reach the subretinal space. We saw that uh, it was able to cross uh, the choroidal endothelial cells and deposit lower in the basal deposits of the retinal pigment epithelium. And we also were able to describe that this monomeric form of CRP, which is the one that pro-inflammatory, could generate by in the surface of the RPE when this RPE was damaged because of the lysophosphatidylcholine present in the surface of damaged RPE. And then basically we were able to, to show some relevance of our previous results because we really were able to show that this CRP, and mon especially the monomeric form, which is the pro-inflammatory one, can reach the sub RPE space and can can cross the choroidal endothelium, and it's able to dissociate locally. And then, so with these results, then now we are able to really go further and really try to see how this CRP it really has a relevant role in AMD in the progression of the disease. And now, uh, what we will try to do next, and in fact, we are working with that is uh, trying to test in an animal model whether the intravitreal or intravenous injection of the dis different forms of CRP can induce some damage in the in the retinal barrier, in the outer blood retinal barrier. With that, will probably close up the loop and really tell us whether it makes sense to target on and go further and study how this protein works in the pathophysiology of uh, AMD. And then, depending on the results we have, then maybe we can really consider that as a new potential target for, for AMD or just uh, seeing it as a bystander of the disease. And uh, I think I'm done with this. <laughs>